Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, long awaited shoe bill making video. I'm super happy with the way this um, this shoe bill turned out. Uh, it has been already snapped up, but um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I wanna make more uh, strange creatures. So more on that in my vlogs, if you wanna check that out. But today's video is gonna be about the process of how I put this all, all this doll together. I have a video about the feet, sculpting the feet using the cost clay. Um, so that's over on my channel. I also have a video on sculpting the head part as well. Um, and also, I don't know if I have it up or not yet, but I'm going to be doing a video on how I did the movable jaw as well. Uh, so really happy with the, the way the movable jaw turned out. Um, and also the wings. Uh, also going to be doing a video on how I made these wings. They are poseable, like you can see. So again, super happy. The claws are also poseable as well because I used the cost clay. So a lot of work went into this creature um, and a lot of trial error, different different materials, different ways of doing things, different techniques. Um, but yeah, super happy with the way it's turned out. Uh, it's It's got a really great posability as well. Um, especially with the with the open mouth it's um, a really cool little doll and I'm really happy with it um, so yeah if you want to see how I put together this shoe bill then uh, keep watching alrighty so if you already haven't seen my sculpting video on how I sculpted this uh, head of the shoe bill check it out I'll try and remember to link it I never remember but um, it is uh, one of my previous videos where I go through the process of how I sculpted this entire head for the shoe bill. I've also got a sculpting video on the feet as well on my channel, which you can check out using cost clay. So, uh, once it's been sculpted, baked and ready to go, uh, I can start painting everything up. So, uh, this video is going to be a little bit of a long video because it was a really big process to um, make this shoe bill. So, uh, strap yourself in <laughs> and uh, watch the entire process. Um, I will have a video on how I did the movable jaw going up on my Patreon and I'm looking at doing a um, tutorial for my shop as well so you can either get it on Patreon or uh, for free or get it in my shop for a price. I also have heaps of um, videos linking back to the making of this uh, shoe bill as well going up on my Patreon. So the next one or the one that's going up in my uh, Patreon today is the armature, how I made the armature for the shoe bill. So that includes the armature for the legs and also the armature for the body. Um, and then I'll also have a wing making tutorial going up that will go through uh, how I made the wings for this, um, for this shoe bill and I'm it is definitely going up on my Patreon, but I'm not too sure if I'm going to make that into an actual tutorial for my shop just yet. I just have to see how the tutorial turns out and if I'm happy with it first. Um, I also have uh, the felting for the, the body of this as well going up on my Patreon for free. Uh, so there's a, a fair few videos going up uh, and tutorials going up for this shoe bill, but in the meantime, uh, we'll go through the short process of making the actual shoe bill. So what I'm doing is I'm painting up all of the pieces that need to be painted before joining the jaw together and I'm using a, um, a mixture of paints. I've kind of mixed the paints in myself to, crea to create the colours that I want because I didn't have them uh, the, col the right colours in the first place. So it's, it's a multiple layer paint job uh, starting off with the lightest colour as a base coat and then building up on all of those darker layers and all of the darker details that you find on the bill of the shoe bill. So I'm using uh, the brand uh, Chromacryl and a mixture of Duravine Matisse as well. Uh, I always prime my pieces first, so I use a canvas primer, um, which works really well for, for priming resin and polymer clays. So it has like a little bit of a tooth that the paint can stick to. Um, and then, yeah, just, just building up on all of the little details and stuff. Have, have a go at any sort of different paints that you have, see how it turns out. Uh, but sometimes elaborate paint jobs like this it does take a little bit of time.
So I was a little bit undecided on how I wanted to do the weathering or the patterning on the shoe build bill. So uh, first off, I, ha I wanted to do it pretty simple. And um, then as I started looking more at pictures of shoe bills, I sort of changed it up a little bit. So I added a darker layer of uh, like orange, like a burnt orange to the bill. And then I added some more weathering and calcification and stuff on top of the bill. So that's uh, where you can see the little black um, scuff marks or something I guess or pigmentation around the bill and also adding some of this calcified look stuff <laughs> I don't know what it is on top of the shoe bill so that you'll see that coming up uh, with the white uh, just adding a little bit of that around all of the crevices and around the edge of the bill Okay, so happy with that and I can start putting the doll together. So like I said, the armature video will be over on my Patreon. It'll go through the entire armature here, including the feet, like I said before. And then I'll also have a separate video on how I did this felting for the body. Uh, it's a different sort of technique rather than sewing things than I normally do. So I do two different techniques. So there's this one and one where I sew everything up on the sewing machine. This one is a lot more time consuming and requires a lot more hand sewing as well. So, uh, but you can check that out over on a Patreon in the coming weeks. It'll all be over there that you can uh, learn how I did this process. So for the faux fur, I am using a grey faux fur and it's got a little bit of black tips on the end of the, of the pile. Um, I cut a little bit of it off because I didn't want too much of that black coming through um, on the shoe build because they are grey. But I left a little bit on because it gives like a nice little gradient and patterning um, on, the, on the main sort of body um, and it kind of make it look like feathers a little bit. So I'm basically creating a body, rough body, of a uh, phoenix body that I created a while ago. Um, I thought it would work as a good base because it's very, very similar to the shoe bill. So I thought it would work as a good base for, um, for the actual body and I could just uh, trim off any excess and so as I'm hand sewing it, I can sort of uh, conform it to the polyfill that I felted before. So um, I thought that would work quite well. So as you can see, what I was talking about with the black on, uh, on the end, end of the pile and the gray underneath. So I wanted more of that gray underneath. Uh, it was a perfect colored tone gray as well. So I thought this uh, fabric would work really well for the shoe build. So what I'm going to do is just cut out those pieces. Uh, I've made the made it a little extra big just so I can um, conform that skin, as you just, I guess, uh, to the shape of the body, and um, it'll get like a nice um, smooth body. So I'm using a small pair of sharp scissors to cut the pile of uh, well, just the backing and not the pile of the body. Uh, you don't want to cut the pile because it ends up cutting all of the detailing off and leaves a really blunt edge. So you want to sort of insert your scissors in between the pile and the backing and just cut the backing of the faux fur. You get the hang of it once you've done it a few times. I don't like using big scissors to do it um, just because um, sometimes they get they don't get in between the pile um, enough and ends up cutting it. So use something small. Uh, for the wings, uh, again, like I said at the start, the wing tutorial will be over on my Patreon in the coming weeks as well. You can learn all about how I did these wings. Um, so I'm just sorting through the feathers. They, when you get a pack of feathers, they have like different direction. Uh, so I'm just sorting through them to see how many I have. And then I can go ahead and start uh, making the wings with the feathers for arranging them from large to small but like I said more of that in um, on over on the actual tutorial on the patreon and uh, you'll get the whole tutorial over there So for the tail bit, I am actually, you, while the beauty, because the spine is made of a um, the ball and socket armature, the end bit has like a little um, 
crevice in in the end of it if that makes sense uh, so I decided to with the tail I decided to fill with hot glue and then place the fe tail feathers inside and I think that worked really well because it held it in place and it's quite strong because it's like a, a crevice in there so I think that worked really well there's other methods of doing it but because I used that ball and socket armature um, I was able to have like a little space for the feathers to insert so moving on to the actual body of the faux fur so like I said b before, um, I'm going to be pinning the skin uh, to the uh, felted body so I can get a nice conformed shape and then I'll be sewing with a ladder stitch everything up and luckily this is only like a two piece uh, body. I did create different pieces for um, the leg muscles just to get a bit more definition because um, the I didn't really account for it on on the actual body pieces so uh, I'm just going ahead and refining the piece uh, against the polyfill uh, cutting out this little section to slip the um, the legs in between and then sewing it all up with ladder stitch I, I do pin it all together first to make sure I have enough faux fur covering the entire body and to make sure that it is um, nice and conformed to that that uh, polyfill So same deal with the wing area, just cutting it with a, um, a pair of scissors and slipping that armature in between. Uh, and then I'm going to be sewing it up again and connecting those uh, two areas back together. So for sewing, I mentioned that I use a ladder stitch. So that's a stitch that closes ends like a, a, to make it a blind end and it uh, sort of integrates really nicely together and it works really well with um, faux fur because of the nature of the pile, it sort of disappears into the, that, that actual fur bit. Uh, you want to get yourself a good quality thread. Uh, you don't want to use cheap thread because there's always a, a chance of snapping it. I've used all sorts of different thread and cheap thread is not good because when you, you need to have a bit of tension when you're using a ladder stitch and uh, it regularly breaks if you have a cheap stitch. I use Gudeman thread and um, even that snaps but uh, I like to use upholstery thread as well because it's a little bit stronger uh, so you can pull and have that gr that strong tension when you're sewing with a lighter stitch and to have uh, that piece is closed because it is a thick fabric so you need to have that tension to have it closed. So I'm sewing those little leg muscles on. It's just like a little um, cone type piece that I cut out of the same fabric and then I'm gonna be sewing it around the body to make like that muscle definition. Uh, I did trim this a little bit to make sure it had that nice transition from leg to muscle and then the rest of the faux fur. Um, so I, and I also attached it using um, the tacky fabric glue that I use for everything else. This is the first time I used this tacky fabric glue to attach the faux fur fabric to cosplay before so I wasn't sure how it was going to react um, but I took the plunge and just did it anyway. <laughs> uh, it, it stuck really well so I didn't have any problems. It stuck like any other polymer clay so that was pretty good news that it didn't have like a weird reaction or anything like that. Again using the same glue to, to stick the um, the rest of the faux fur along the neck to the polymer clay head again no issues as well I've done this a million times anyway um, so that provides a good base and because I'm not um, inserting the polyfill I didn't really need to um, attach the neck properly I did it at the end just to make sure that the body was correct before uh, attaching that to the final piece uh, so moving on to refining and closing everything up so again this will be included in my wing tutorial over on my patreon uh, in the coming weeks but I'm just finishing up the wings for the um, for the shoe bill and then also applying some faux fur to the head I will be trim trimming the faux fur once everything's dry uh, but it, it takes a little bit of fiddling around to get that um, nice uh, layering of faux fur so once that's all done and trimmed and I'm happy with the way the body's looking, I can start refining things and closing things up. Uh, so basically I start adding any little details to the faux fur that were missed out from the actual sculpt. So that's painting in little shadows and marks or details. Um, 
anything like that. So I'm using a grey acrylic paint to paint in the eye area and add a little bit of shadowing to all the little creases on the shoebill's head and also around the, the bill area, just refining and blending in all of those details so it's not like a stark transition uh, from bill to faux fur. So sh shading creates a hell of a lot of difference um, when you're uh, applying faux fur. So uh, definitely do some more experiments, uh, have your reference images on your computer or something and uh, try and replicate those uh, marks and shadows and creases because it will really bring your doll to life. So adding the final little touch here and they are the feathers on the back of the shoebill's head. Again, I have reference images to make sure I've got the right sort of feathering on the back of the head. It really finished it off when I added these feathers. So uh, definitely go above and beyond with your, all your little details because um, it really brings a doll to life. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed making this doll. I wanted to do something challenging and uh, something that was completely out of my comfort zone. So I did a lot of different things on this doll and I learned a lot. So um, I definitely give it a plot, give, pick, a, pick a weird creature and do it, right? Uh, so this doll has already found a home. I am doing another commission for a shoe bill that someone contacted me about. So there'll be more uh, like an updated version of a shoe bill. Uh, I'm super happy the way this turned out anyway. I really like the realism of the face and just the gaze that I captured in the sculpt. So if you want to have early access to any of my dolls that I'm releasing, uh, check out my Patreon. I'm doing a um, proboscis monkey at the moment. So if you want early access to that, head over to my Patreon, join any tier and you can get access to um, early releases of my work. You can also check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Creatures of Net. I'm trying to make a TikTok, but we'll get there essentially. Um, and uh, yeah, my shop, creaturesofnet.com. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.